good to be back in the house of the Lord uh, again this morning, and we count it a privilege and honor to be able to read God's Word and to make a few comments on it. And we want to study this morning some in the book of, of Ephesians. If you would turn there to chapter 6, the last chapter in the book of Ephesians. And <clears throat> we want to speak a little bit this morning on kind of hinging on honoring. And uh, there's, uh, uh, there's quite a bit of scripture in the Old Testament and in the New Testament also concerning the word of honoring. And it's honoring is <clears throat> broke down obeying and, and uh, praising, if you would. And, uh, but mostly it's obeying. And uh, we see where that the Lord asks us to honor Him. Uh, and we, we need to. And uh, we also, as we live this life, we have fleshly parents. And we have parents that we need to honor. And as, uh, you know, there's, there's a great promise with this scripture here that we're going to read in a minute uh, about honoring your parents. And uh, it says here in verse 1 of chapter 6 of the book of Ephesians, you that are there, read with me. Children, and this is talking of the fleshly, the fleshly nature. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Now, it's not all that you have to put your parents up there as gods or that, but the thing of it is, anything that, uh, when you have a parent that's trying to instruct you and teach you about the Lord Jesus Christ and give you sound advice, listen, you need to listen to it and you need to obey it. Now, if he tells you to go out and kill somebody, that's not in the Lord. Right. Because the Lord says, thou shalt not kill. So we, 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 we all, have, all have enough knowledge about us to know that everything that our parents would, and, and I know that there's parents that tell their children to do, to do a lot of things that they shouldn't do. But if a child is raised up in the church and the parents are bringing them to church, they should have enough ability to, to understand right from wrong. But it says here, children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Amen. This is right. And he's saying it is wrong for you to disobey them. It is wrong for uh, you to uh, say things to them that you shouldn't say and be out of, the, out of God's will with them. But it says here, honor thy father and mother, Amen. which is the first commandment with promise. Right. Now, the promise is that it will be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. Right. That's what the Bible says. Now, if you want to verify that and, and, and look at it just a little bit more, if you'll just hold where you're at right there, I'm going to turn over here to Exodus in, in chapter 19, I believe it is. Or uh, maybe it's 20. Let me look and see. I, I, I want to make sure that I tell you the right. Exodus 20, 12. Notice what it says again. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth, on the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Amen. So, this is a double whammy, if you want to call it that. But in any way, God respects honor. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not only the children and the father, but listen, it's a greater thing than that. He says here that in verse 4, that ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath, right. but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, this word, I look provoked up, and it says... To excite to anger. That's what provoking means. And also, it says wrath is a violent anger. And uh, also, this morning, we have, we have people in this world that raise up children. And they don't care a thing in this world about them. Right. They'll leave them on a doorstep. They'll leave them in a parked car in a 90 degree weather. They'll do this. They'll do that. Now, you know... 
there's fathers that don't care for their children. Right. But on the other hand, you see these children running up and down the streets, rioting and breaking out glasses and, and mistreating people and stuff like that. So you know they're not honoring God. So we've got a thing going on this morning that we need to have a happy medium on and say, okay, now what is what and what is what? We need to honor our earthly father and we need to honor our heavenly father. So Amen. this thing with honoring goes two ways. And, and the father of, of, a, of an earthly child needs to uh, pay close attention to that child and not to excite that child and all of this, but he needs to talk to them in, the, in, a, in a respectful way and to try to encourage them. And the, and the, and the child needs to uh, honor the father because he's doing that, because he's, he's trying to teach him like he should be. And listen... This, these, this heart, it develops a haughty spirit. Right. It, it does. And uh, listen, there's no reason for that. Well, you say, uh, you might say, and there's a lot of people, a lot of uh, children that don't have a father and a mother. They don't, I mean, they've been adopted and stuff of this nature. Listen, that shouldn't make any difference. Amen. Because of a, if, a, if a man adopts a, if a parent, adopts a child and, 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 and feeds that child and takes care of that child and furnishes him a place to sleep and eat and all of this stuff. Listen, he is just exactly like the good Samaritan that come by to the old boy that was down and been beat half to death. And listen, that's the same, that's the same condition that these these homes and all through this country have got children in there and nobody to love them, nobody to care for them or nothing this. Well, so that Samaritan took that man after he had been rejected by two or three and he took that child and uh, that person and, and he took him to a place and he poured in oil and he paid his bill for him and all this. And it's the same way this morning. You can't look at you can't look at your adopted parents and say, hey, you're not my daddy or you're not my mom. Well, you, you know, that's, that may be in the flesh in a sense, but listen, they had enough care for you and enough love for you that they, they took you out of that muck and that mar and paid your way. Right. And furnished you a place to stay off. So listen, that's, that's, the, that's the thing about this adoption thing. And so, even though you can say, "Well, I'm not got, I've not got, I've not got no mama and daddy," hey, you've got a friend, right? Because if they weren't, they wouldn't have took care of you. So we see here in these things that we ought to, we ought to sit down sometime and just think the situation over and say, "Now, what have I got?" Because a lot of times, you know, we've got a whole lot more than we give anybody credit for, right? And it's the same way this morning, people, with me and with everybody else. Listen, I was I was in that I was in that muck and that mar, and Jesus Christ came and spoke to my heart. The Holy Spirit come in and listen. He adopted me, people. Right. He adopted me, and now I know this morning that I have got a father in heaven, and I did have a father on earth, but listen, I know this morning what he's done for me, mm -hmm. and I, this morning, appreciate it to the point that I'm thankful, like I said a while ago, that I can get up and lead songs. I'm thankful this morning that I can put a, a tithe in the tithe box because that's what God said for us to do. I'm, I'm thankful this morning that I can come in here to this church and and tell you uh, about things that I have tried to do. I can ask prayer for people and I can get up and read the scripture and I can I can say, thus saith the Lord. I'm Amen. proud of that. Amen. And this is some of the things this morning <laughs> that we need to think about even, even if, if we get out of the fleshly realm and, and, and we talk a spiritual, a spiritual thing. We need to be, we need to be or that we want to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to honor God. We want to honor the Holy Spirit. We want to, uh, we want to have that love within us because people, it's a, it's a time, it's a sad time out there. And I know everything is going haywire, but hey, we've got a father that's going to, going to supply our needs Amen. and we got a father that has already assured us 
that we will be in heaven. And anybody that this morning that hasn't got that assurance, listen, they're in bad shape. Mm -hmm. Because just as sure as this world, there, that's that is the last. That's the last thing that we need to think about this morning. Is 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 doing without the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior? Because hey, hell awaits those that are lost. Right. Hell is there, and it is enlarging itself, and you you will go there because that you have not obeyed. The Lord's command. You have not. You've not called upon Him. You've not asked Him. You've not submitted yourself to Him. And and hell is a terrible place to go. Right. And it's the same way with a with a person that leaves a home here upon this earth, uh, and his parents have done well for him and, and helped him and done these things. Hey, it's it's a bad world out there to jump out into. And right. so you need to count your blessings. You need to count your blessings and say, Lord, thank you for these blessings. And we this morning that are that are saved, we need to count our blessings time and time again. Amen. Because, you know, we sing songs about praising the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Listen, we need to praise Him. Mm -hmm. We need to we need to let the world know what is going on and that, that we stand for the Lord. And so I want you to I want you to, to, to think about these things this morning. Now notice here again, here as we read on, he says uh, in uh, in uh, uh, Colossians, I want you to turn right on over to Colossians just a little bit there. In uh, chapter three, wait a minute. Colossians chapter three. Look at verse twenty. Colossians 3, 20. Uh, I'll find it just a minute. Just bear with me. Thank you. 3, 20. Uh, I mean, you know what? Okay, I'm in the wrong book. Colossians 3, 20. I'll get to it. Children, it says here, obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. And fathers, again, it says, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your master. And these are this is this is still uh, a fleshly uh, fleshly thing because listen, I think it's talking about it says servants, and that's to the ones that you're employed to. If you if you're working out somewhere or another, and I think that's what it's talking about. He says servants obey in all things your master according to the flesh, uh, not with eye service as man pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do in the it heartily as to the Lord Amen. and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve Lord, uh, Lord, Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong thing he has done, and there is no respect of persons. Now, I want to turn just, if you would, uh, with me just a minute over in the book of Luke. We want to read just a little bit there in Luke 10. And kind of bring this thing uh, out a little bit more clearer. Maybe I can, if I can. But look in Luke 10, 25. And I mentioned this to you. And I mentioned this to you. But I want, I want, you, to, I want you to get the, the good man. And, and, and it, it talks about a certain uh, man or lawyer. And he was talking to Jesus. And, and uh, uh, here in... Uh, Verse 25 of Luke 10, it said, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Now that's been asked through the ages. It's been asked, how can I be saved? How can I be saved? And a, a person that is a person that has not been saved as of yet. It is a problem to them because the thing of it is, their faith is so weak. They don't know who to put their, their, their faith in. But here it's got to be this way. It's got to be by faith. You have, and, and if you're not saved this morning, you need to be saved. And you need to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and have that faith within yourself that he is able to take care of your soul. 
because the devil does not want you to do, do these things. So he, here the lawyer is talking to Jesus. Notice, and he says in verse 25, uh, a, law, a master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. So we see here that we've got a, a question asked, how can I in, in, in inherit eternal life? And he, he, he brings it right down to love. It's, it's all hands on love. But notice now, and he said in verse 28, and he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. Uh, wait just a minute. Verse, uh, let, I won't read this. And he said unto him, uh, in, verse, uh, in verse 26, uh, let me read it again. He said unto him, What is written in the law? How, how readest thou? And he said, and he told him to love thy neighbor as I said. And then verse 28, And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But, after he had told him the plan of salvation, after he had told him how to do this, he said, but. So he's got a rebuttal to what Jesus Christ has said. He wants to, he wants to and, 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 and that's what's going on in the world today is that nobody don't want to hear nothing. They want to say, well, but this or but that. What about this? Notice what he said. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? So Jesus had told him, and thy, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said, who is my neighbor? Well, as I have already mentioned a little bit, I am, a certain man went down in verse, uh, uh, in verse 30, and Jesus said, answered and said, a certain man went down from Jericho, a Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, and stripped, and which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now this is a de this is the devil and what he has to do, how he can affect you, how that he can punish you, how he can torture you. And, and the, that's the devil, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to beat you down. He wants to get you just as low as he can, and he'll leave you. Notice here. And he says, they left him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Notice now, he's a priest. And again, I want to bring to your attention this morning, he is a priest, and that's what they call these so-called preachers and teachers in churches that will teach you and don't care nothing about you and will pass you by and won't try to help you any. All they're wanting is the little green stuff, and that's it. It's a, it's a shame, but that's the way it is. So he said here, And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, which was one of the chosen of God to serve in the temple and all this, when he was at that, the same place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. So we see this man is not getting any attention whatsoever. He's not got any, he's not got any hope whatsoever. He's laying or dying. And listen, that's the same condition we're, we that were lost was in. Amen. We were dying. We were lost. And we were on our way to hell. Now, here comes the Samaritan. Very, very different in the Bible because they were half-breeds. And they were uh, different things about them. But you remember, uh, and Brother Adam made, made this mention to once before about uh, the Samaritan and, and, the, and, the, and the, uh, uh, the Levite and, and them praying. And one of them said, oh, I hope that uh, he told how great he was and all this. And the other one said, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Uh, in so many words. But here's, here the, is in a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. You and I need this compassion. Amen. Not, not from this Samaritan so much as 
from the Lord Jesus Christ and from God our, uh, our Father. Because if it wasn't for that compassion that God had for us and sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins, we would all be unqualified to go to hell. Right. All of us would die and go to hell. Right. But here, here this compassion was, and it says here, he had compassion on him when he saw him. And in verse 34, and went and went to him and bound up his wound, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an end and took care of him. This is this is a type of salvation, if you would. Because listen, we were in that condition, and Jesus dying on the cross of Calvary made a provision for us where that the Holy Spirit could speak to our souls and we heard the, the word of God and it brought us to our our, uh, the, our, our brought us our minds to the condition of where we were at and listen we uh, obeyed the Lord and this 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 compassion here is what brought us into that and again I want I want to I want to emphasize this thing of compassion and honor we need, we need to have this compassion within us. And we don't need to look right down, straight down, and say, well, it's going to be this way or be that way. Listen, we have to, we have to consider our brothers and our sisters. Mm -hmm. We have to consider our parents. Because, listen, a lot of times, parents are a whole lot smarter than you give them credit for. Right. Yeah. They've been there. They've done that. They've had the knocks. And Jesus, Jesus Christ knows our condition. He knows that a lot of times we don't know what's out there in front of us. And, and listen, uh, when, before we were saved, we just didn't care. Really. Right. We didn't have no desire. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to well. I don't hear it now. See, that's what, that was the attitude that I had. I don't hear it. But listen, Mom kept on talking kept on praying, I kept, then I kept going to church, and I heard the word of God preached. Amen. And one day, it happened. One night, it happened. And I'll never forget it. Amen. Woken up by an old road, an old gravel road, I've been to church, and uh, I was walking home, and the Lord just, he, he touched my heart, He spoke to my heart, and I said, oh, if I can just only get to the house and get in bed and go to sleep, I'll push it all behind me. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. I rolled and tumbled half the night. But listen, I was saved. Amen. I was saved. And Amen. Uh, uh, I heard God's word and I heard that, that Holy Spirit dealt with my heart. And listen, that's, what it's, that's what's got to happen. People's hearts have got to be open. Children, obey your parents. Your heart has got to be open. Fathers, don't rebuke them. I mean, don't provoke them. Uh, you, you, we need to have we need to have a, a happy medium there, and we need to we need to honor our parents. Amen. We need to because it's right with the Lord. And listen, you get this thing here, and He says that you'll have a long life. Mm -hmm. And and so hey, it's a go. And so here we see this Samaritan as he brings this old man into this place. And it says he'd already poured in wine and he bandaged him up and carried him in there. And that's just, that, that's the condition that we were in when we were lost. We were without hope. And he says here, verse 34, and, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to the inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. And so listen, here's another thing that we need to think about. When when God told when God spoke to the to the children of Israel and told them about their uh, offerings and all this. And then he went over there in Malachi and he told them what, what was going to happen. He said, I'll pour you out a blessing that you won't be able to hold. Right. 
And listen, we need to pay attention to that. We need to tithe. We need to put a tenth of our time that we get from our labor or whatever it is. We need to give that to God mm -hmm. because it's what he said. And he said, I'll pour you out a blessing. And listen, people, it ain't going to be raining silver dollars on your head. <laughs> I've, got, I've got news for you. But the thing of it is, a lot of times when you go to the doctor or the hospital and, and the doctor will push you a pill or two out and the Lord will bless that thing, and the next day or two, here you go, feeling good. Could have been that you had cancer and you just, next few days you stayed to the graveyard. Right. Now listen, I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this because we need to understand it. We need to understand these things because it's of God. And so it's, it's, it's right to live by. Now, he said he, on the, on, he, he would repay him. And listen, this same, this same man, this same Samaritan, a type of, I believe, Jesus, he said, when I return, if there's anything else, I'll repay you. Listen, Lord Jesus Christ is coming one of these days. Amen. And we are going to look up one of these days, and, and if we're in the grave, we're going to hear that voice. If we're living, we're going to look at and see him, and, and we're going to be called out of here. Amen. And so he's, going, he's coming back, and this old, old Samaritan, he told him the truth. He said, I'll, I'll be back this way, and uh, I'll pay you anything else you've done for him. And so here he said, now, <clears throat> notice what, uh, in verse 36, what Jesus says. Which, and he's talking to this lawyer. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Amen. People, that's what God has done to us. That's what God has done. And if, you know, if, if nothing else, if nothing else rings with you, think about the place that we have to live Think of the place that we can have to come and worship in a place where they, they, they don't bother us and we can serve the Lord. He's, mm -hmm. he's had mercy on us. He's, he's blessed us. He's blessed us more than, than anybody. And so he said here, He that showed mercy on him then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Amen. And that is love thy neighbor. And he say, well... I can't love my father because I haven't got one. Or I can't love my son because I haven't got one. Listen, if you've adopted or if you are adopted or if you, uh, whatever. Listen, you still can, you can still agree with this love thy neighbor as I said. Because uh, you are, you are neighbors. If you're staying together and, and, and all this. So anyway. This is, this is what the, I, I felt like that the Lord would have to teach this morning. And, and don't, 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 don't let it just slide over you like a water off a duck's back. Because I believe it's what God, God would have us to, to understand and to know this, this morning. That uh, we should honor Him and we should honor our parents and we should honor our children. And we Amen. should obey our parents. And, 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 and I think... Uh, that God has always kept His promises, and I Man. think that you'll enjoy a life here upon His earth. But it's you know it's in the it's in your corner. It's a, it, you can you can you can use it or you can reject it. And uh, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of them rejected it. Right. There's a lot of them rejected it because the Bible tells us in Isaiah. That hell has enlarged itself. Right. Now, that goes to show you that there's not very many honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. So, with that, I'm going to close. It's time for me to quit. So, thank you all for this. And I hope that I hope that some of this will will help you. Uh, if nothing else, just to encourage you to to study God's Word and think upon the things that uh, have been said this morning. Thank you all. Amen. Amen.